Hello, everyone. Welcome to a live stream today with Mike Davison. He's a business coach in Koh Samui. And today we're going to be asking him some questions. Uh, he actually came in back to Thailand about a month ago through the Phuket Sandbox. And now he's living in beautiful Koh Samui. So today we're going to be, uh, Mike is an online marketer and business coach from the UK who began his journey with entrepreneurship while working as a teacher in Thailand. Over the past few years, Mike has gone on to speak on stage at live events around the world, training hundreds of people how to build sustainable online businesses using social media. So welcome to the show, Mike. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, Bird. How are you doing today? Doing great. Coming to you from a yellow co-working space here in Chiang Mai. Great stuff. Great little space. So I've heard, huh? Yeah, it's great. There's a lot of digital nomads working from here. So... Fast Wi-Fi, always important. Good coffee. Where are you coming from? You're in Koh Samui now? Yeah, I am. I'm in a, actually a little rental apartment that I took on before I arrived in Lamai in Koh Samui. So I've been here for about a week. I've, I've got this place booked out until the beginning of September, and then I'm going to be moving to a, a longer-term rental here on the island. But yeah, I'm in Lamai, Koh Samui today, mate. Beautiful area. Spent about six months in Koh Samui, and Lamai is a, a great place to be. Really is. Awesome well. place. So let's start out the interview. I, I'm curious, what, what motivated you to come back to Thailand, and how long have you been a digital nomad? At sure. That? Um, well, I mean, let me, let me tell you my story from arriving in Thailand, which has been 10 years now, actually. I, I left the U.K., in 2011 and I did the usual thing you know I studied music at university left university thinking I was going to be getting some great job in the music scene I had all of these big ambitions and I ended up pulling pints in a pub for three years <laughs> um, and then I upgraded to working in a coffee shop and then I did a little bit of music promotion and sort of became the manager of this music venue but I was completely underwhelmed straight up with you with life in the UK. You know, I'd studied at university and I was just bouncing from dead end job to dead end job, which is pretty common along a, among a lot of graduates in the UK. You know, you, you drop 10, 20 grand on university and you come out no better for it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I decided to basically jump ship from the UK back in 2011. And then a lot of my friends were going to teach abroad, all right? So one of my best mates went over to teach in South Korea, and I applied for that, you know, for the for the cohort of teachers to go over there, but I missed the boat by about two weeks. I was too ah. late to get to South Korea. So the, the teaching agency came back to me and said, how do you fancy Thailand? And at that time, I didn't even know where Thailand was on the map, <laughs> so... You and me both. I naturally mm -hmm. said yes, you know, I'd heard amazing things about the place. So I jumped on a plane and landed in a city called Hat Yai in the south of Thailand. Oh. I did some teacher training there and spent my first year working 30,000 baht a month English teaching job in a little Thai government school in a place called Satun. Now, a lot of people don't know where that is, but most Near people- Kalibe, right? Kalibe. It's close to Kalibe? Exactly. So it's right down the south on the border with Malaysia. So I spent my first year there and it really was getting thrown in at the deep end. You know, there there was two 7-Elevens in town, maybe <laughs> 15, 16 expats living there. It, it was really, you know, really deep small. south of Thailand. It wasn't like Phuket where you can drive and get cheese and wine and all the Western things. You know, it was it was really an incredible experience actually. And it was my 12 months there. I fell in love with Thailand and I knew that it wasn't just going to be a 12 month stay. It was going to be much longer than that. So in 2012, I actually moved up to Phuket, got myself a job in an English program, which meant I was getting a little bit better money. I was making like 45 K a month, which it's good money, you know, in, in Phuket, you could do okay. You can, yeah, you can do a nice well. life on 45K a month there. I did that for a while and I did a PGCE, so a postgraduate certificate in education. 
And then I actually got a job in an international school about six months after getting that PGCE, um, which meant I could put my music degree into use. So I was head of performing arts at one of the biggest international schools in Phuket. And wow. I, I did that for five years. All right. And that was a full on job. Yeah. A lot of these teaching jobs in Thailand. Maybe you're a teacher in Thailand yourself. Maybe you're watching this. I mean, let me know if you agree or you disagree. But a lot of those teaching jobs, they're fairly easy. You know, mm -hmm. you're working like 20 hours a week. There's not big pressure. There's no inspections like you'd be getting in the US or the UK. It's, it's a fairly easy ride, you know. But stepping up into this international school, it was bang, game changed. Um, and all of a sudden, there was all of these extra things I was having to do, all of these extra responsibilities. I was having to put on big shows. I put on The Jungle Book and Annie and all of these yes. big musicals mm -hmm. in, uh, in a performance theater for 400 parents. You know, I was putting on all sorts of different performances, writing reports, and it, it was battering my head straight up with you. It wasn't why I moved to Thailand. And I found myself in 2018, after the end of another school year, just feeling like I can't yeah. do this for much longer. Burnt out. You got yeah, burnt out. Completely mm -hmm. burnt out. And the, the, the school just kept putting more and more responsibilities on my plate. The, the Basically, the goalposts just getting wider and wider and wider. And surprise, surprise. Yeah, headache. My my salary is staying the same. My salary is not going up. So it was it was the beginning of 2018 when I started to explore other avenues. You know, I, in living in Phuket, I met all of these digital nomad types who were seemingly quite a lot of them were making a lot of money and just jumping from island to island yeah. and just driving to school, just watching like some of these dads who would come in were doing crypto and affiliate marketing. I was like, man, I need a bit of that. And I experimented with a few different things. You know, I, I started an Amazon store. I was selling Muay Thai boxing shorts on eBay for a really? while, which was pretty ah, successful. In the early heydays of, of eBay. With the power exactly. With I was making power, some power good power. money from that, but mm -hmm. like half my apartment was stacked full of Muay Thai shorts. It was like driving to the driving to oh. the post office like three times a day sometimes. I had to get an employee who was doing it for me. And it, it, it wasn't really the online business that I dreamed of, you know? Um, so now you can be very successful with a drop shipping business. So you don't have to get any of the products. It's just sent straight to the customer. Well, that's exactly people are doing it. that nowadays. That's exactly it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. in, in March 2018, I, I discovered affiliate marketing. And I went through a course. I really got to know the business model, got some practice in and, and launched my affiliate marketing business back in early 2018. And that Excellent. was actually my, my ticket out of the classroom. So I left my teaching job. I started selling affiliate marketing offers. I also spent some time working in real estate during that transition period. So I was social media marketing manager for the biggest property company in Phuket, wow. which at the time was incredibly fruitful. I've got to say when the foot traffic in Phuket was heavy, we were, we were bringing in three, four clients a day, always had the sales team on tours and, you oh, know, slicing a percentage of every single one of the online. It, it was You're a brilliant, it, time. it was mm -hmm. a brilliant time, but as we know, times have changed. Foot traffic suddenly stopped. The real estate market suddenly halted. So over the last 18 months, I, I returned to the UK uh, mm -hmm. to actually help my folks build a house over there, which was pretty oh, awesome. And over the last 18 months, I've been building my online coaching business and helping other people to actually start affiliate marketing business using the same blueprint, if you will, mm -hmm. that I used back in 2018. So that's my 10-year history in <laughs> 10 minutes, mate. In a nutshell. Great. So where can we find more? I was looking at your website earlier. It looks like you have like a, a master class that you're teaching and that's free. And then they can work with you one on one for business coaching. Yeah, that that's, that's right. That's right. So, I mean, I've got various different products that I've made. 
uh -huh. um, that that teach people about affiliate marketing. So um, the, the the main product that I sell is it's a ninety nine dollar course, and that basically gives you the outline of how to create a affiliate marketing business. Some great recommended cool. products, some traffic training, some funnel building training, and also I work one on one with with clients as well. If people really want some, you know one-on-one -on -one instruction. I take on clients once every three months. At the minute, I'm not actually boarding anybody else on because it takes a lot of one-on-one -on -one effort. You know, I'm working with these people a lot and I don't like enough to on your plate. Any clients on at one time because I like to really concentrate on the ones that I'm working with and make sure they're getting results. You know, I see a lot of these mm -hmm. business coaches online and they're just sort of churning clients through on a conveyor belt without any real care for their, you know, how they're actually succeeding. And I've experienced that myself, you know, almost the, the pump and dump approach. And it didn't sit well with me. It really didn't sit well. So I, I tend to board clients on once every three months. I'll be taking another cohort on in October. And I spend a lot of time with these people, you know, uh -huh. I get in calls with them, I'm implementing them and I'm I'm really helping them smash their goals and get results, you know, get real results, not just likes and shares on Facebook. That will only get you so far. Yeah, it totally will. It's not really going to move the needle in terms in terms of bringing in more clients for your business. Definitely not. Ultimately. And and also the own personal satisfaction as well. Do you offer coaching for that type of thing as well? Is it? It's more just business coaching, right? Not life coaching. Yeah, it's 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 straight up affiliate marketing coaching. Oh, affiliate marketing coaching. That's right, what I specialize right. in. Life coaching uh -huh. and things like that. I've I've tried in the past, and I know a lot of people run that business model successfully. But for me, That's I like to focus on the the money making element. Okay, the money. Mm -hmm. There's loads of personal development stuff that you can find out there. I'll give my recommendations to my clients, but. It's really the tangible steps that I like people, I like to show people. And really, if you follow those steps that I give you, and if you implement them, there's nothing stopping you from making money. Mm -hmm. You know, the system that I provide people, the products and offers that I share with people, like they convert. I've been selling them myself for the last three years and they pay every single month, you know? So this, this system that I've been using, I've basically packaged it up and I'm yep. sharing that with my clients and we're, we're getting great results, you know, helped several people leave their full-time jobs already. And this year I'm hoping to do the same. Amazing. Well, best of luck and keep up the great work. I love what you're doing in Thailand. You've also started a group too, where you're bringing in other expats, digital nomads that want to come here, sharing lots of knowledge to that group as well. So doing great work. But the next you. question I want to ask you is what was your experience like during the Phuket sandbox. So you came in what about a month ago and it was sure, a two year yeah. point. Let's hear more about that. I think this would be interesting. Absolutely. So just to give you a sense of perspective, um, I returned to the UK in July, 2020. Okay. And initially my plan was to stay there for three months, but as we well know, it didn't, it didn't turn out like that. Flights became difficult. The ASQ quarantine, I didn't really fancy doing 14 days in a box. You know, that <laughs> yeah. wasn't really top of my priority list. I wanted you to get back people. to Thailand, mm -hmm. but staying in a hotel room for 14 days, nah, I wasn't going to do that. Not very so appealing. As soon yeah. as the sandbox cropped up, I heard about it. I'd had both vaccinations already. So yeah, it, it was a no-brainer for me. And the fact that I'd been in Phuket, for you know nine ten years already all of my things were there my apartment my cat my life was in phuket you know so i, I had to get back there so sign no mm -hmm. i i flew out to the sandbox on the 16th of july um lots of red tape to jump through you know it's not just like booking a booking a flight in a hotel like it used to be unfortunately there are various documents you've got to upload a specific hotels you've got to stay in, book your taxi, you've got to get PCR tests, all of this fun stuff. Um, Lots of government bureaucracy that you have to deal with and hoops to jump through. Very true. And, you know, it's it, it was straight up with you. It was a pain in the ass at the time. However, when I touched down into Phuket, it, it was all worth it. And, you know, at the end of the day, 
The Thai government are doing a fantastic job with this. The eyes of the world are on the Thai government. Yeah, it's in the spotlight. You know, it's in this the spotlight. So mm -hmm. they're making sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. And the actual landing procedure into Phuket, man, I mean, we had some issues in Omar, sorry, in uh, Qatar. All right. The flight was delayed. The document check was a bit scrappy. But once we landed into Phuket, the manpower on the ground was amazing. You know, there were people ushering you off the flights, telling you where to sit, all these people in PPE gear, checking your application on your phone. I mean, you know, when you go through Thai quarantine, you've got to scan uh -huh. your four fingers, right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. They, had, they had one guy and his job was purely to clean the finger scanner. So at yeah. every single every single immigration point, there was one person who was checking the actual passport and another person who was just standing there and cleaning <laughs> the actual the, talk the about, scanner. Talk about being a specialist. That they guy covered every one, single one base. Thing. And I landed into Phuket Airport. I was in and out the airport in 60 minutes, which wow. quite frankly is faster That's than bad. normal. It's uh -huh. faster than normal. So Landed into Phuket, straight down to the hotel, and basically the two weeks that followed were absolutely fantastic. You know, you, you've got to stay in your hotel room until you get your negative PCR test back, which for mm -hmm. me was within eight hours. So oh, really? I thought it was th three days, but it doesn't necessarily take that long. No, nah, it was eight hours for me. So the next, I got into the hotel at what? five at night i woke up the next morning there'd been a bit of paper pushed into my door saying you can you can go out and enjoy enjoy phuket so i was straight down to the beach jumping Freedom. in the ocean. totally it was a Freedom. great feeling uh -huh. so phuket itself very very quiet now obviously i mean it's definitely not the place that it used to be it's You're telling uh, me Whew. like the I rest of the place, you know your 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 activities they're not really curtailed if you want to do certain things, like straight up with you guys, if you want to go there, sit in beer yeah, bars all days and talk to ladies, you're going to be happen. Yeah, not that's it's happen. not the kind of Phuket holiday. If you want that, don't bother because you, you won't be able to get that. But if, like me, you're not into that scene, you'd, more, you'd rather spend time at the beaches, driving to waterfalls, enjoying the coffee shops, hanging out with other cool people. Yeah. You'll have a great time, which is exactly what I did for the for the two weeks in Phuket. I was out every day exploring my old favorite places, hanging out with some old friends of mine, and generally enjoying everything the island has to offer. And you know, you walk on a beach there now. For example, yes, Karon Beach. Typically, nope. mm -hmm. you'll have to weave your way in between the Russian and Chinese tourists. You know, step your way over a couple of empty beer bottles now you're, you're strolling down the beach i'm not kidding you there were times i had that beach to myself i've Little, never seen it no before funny. i never saw phuket before covid and and now i mean i would actually i, I did arrive in phuket on january 2020 mm -hmm. right in patong and i checked into a hostel i walked to the beach and there were russian people everywhere chinese taking selfies you know everybody's Pack four people, and now it's a completely different situation. There's nobody. It really is, uh, yeah. And I mean, kind of sad, but a little bit lonely and depressing, but also very peaceful and serene. It, I mean, so it, it has it has its pros and cons. At the end of the day, doesn't it? I mean, it's all it's all very well and good saying it's a nice to walk down a quiet, a private beach, but when you look at the people in Phuket, they are they're suffering. Hard. They're really suffering. Yeah, they're struggling yeah. very hard. Local businesses, uh, suppliers of restaurants, the real estate scene. It's people need to make money there, which is why I would say to you guys, if you're watching this and you're thinking about coming to Phuket or Thailand, don't believe everything you see on the media. You know, I'm here, a Mike. Of propaganda we're both there. living a very, very comfortable, non restrained life over here. I was living in the UK for 12 months and I felt super negative there super curtailed uh, media just constantly looking uh, crap at you you know over here there's a different mindset amongst the people yes they're going through a hard time but at the same time there seems to be a lot of hope for the future here and the people 
are really remaining positive. The Thai people still greet you with a smile on your face, whereas in England, they just like to moan and complain about this situation. The Thai people, it. it's a refreshing change. It's the land of smiles. So even, even though we're going through all these hardships and tar difficult times, people are still smiling. They're happy. And a lot of the Thai people, when they lose their job, say they're working in a hotel or somewhere, they go back to live with their family on the farm uh, or wherever it may be, in a small village somewhere. So I've, I've lived in Austin for many years, and they have a serious homelessness problem there. Austin, there's people camped out on the sidewalks and tents. It's the same in Los Angeles. And I've been surprised, even during this terrible economic recession in Thailand, you almost never see homeless people. Well, I think it's a very different culture in, you know, when it comes to family mm -hmm. um, in yeah. Thailand. I mean, I know certainly in the UK, I mean, same is not true with my family, but you have families who don't speak to each other. You know, there's not that there's not that bond as strong mm -hmm. over in the West, certainly. But you're right here. It's pretty normal for a 30, 40 year old guy or lady to, to go back and live with their folks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I did it. I, I have a Thai girlfriend. I went with lit to live with her family in a small village in Lopebury for two weeks. And we had it's very minimal, no, no modern conveniences. But it was an amazing experience. I bet it was, so, man. I yeah, bet it was. For sure. So uh so next I want to add, uh, jump in. We already touched on it a little bit, but I want to talk to you about what you're doing to generate passive income online because I get this question a lot from people in my group, Digital Nomad Ventures. Uh, they're, they're worried, you know, they, they can quit their job and then just start working online, but they don't know how they're going to find clients or find work and sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you have to say about that? How are you, how are you sustaining it? Like generate passive well, income? Well, okay. for me personally, oh, for me personally, I've, I've got various different streams of income. Mm -hmm that pay me every month and if you're watching this and you're thinking about how do i make money online you know what's the best way what i would say to you is, is don't don't go down an alleyway all the way and don't get tunnel vision yeah there's don't so put all your eggs in one basket there's so many different ways to create an income online and for me personally like affiliate marketing is what i specialize in so if you don't know what that is already it's selling products on behalf of other companies. Okay, so there's lots of big brands out there. Walmart, Nike, eBay, Amazon, um, Lenovo, yeah? All of these physical products that you can sell, but as well, you've got various different digital offers that you can sell, okay? So I know Restream has got a, yeah. a, an affiliate program that Mike's using to stream this on, Photoshop, Microsoft Word, okay? So you can become essentially an independent seller for one of these products. And there are literally thousands, thousands. to choose from. Thousands. So it's so overwhelming. There's so we're many. We're talking like physical products and digital products. And as well, you can do service products as well. Also so email, email marketing platforms like MailChimp. There's, there's auto, what is the other one? I don't know. There's lots of email marketing platforms out there with affiliate programs. Pretty much every where out there has got an affiliate program. Pretty much every brand out there has got an affiliate program. And you know, all these influencers and people that you see online, it's like every single one of them will be running some sort of affiliate program. They not might they might not come out on, you know, on their profiles and say, I'm an affiliate for this, I'm affiliate for that. They don't need to, that they can do it using various different math methods, which means you don't have to do the hard sell on your profile. You know, you don't have to be showing people diet shakes and vitamin <laughs> supplements that you can sell. I'm like, nobody gives a shit about that no. straight with you guys. And you know, you've seen these people in groups who are just constantly pitching their stuff. It's, so a, turn -off. it's, so you know, it's a big, yeah, big yeah. turn off. So, the way that I teach it is you don't have to pitch friends. You don't have to pitch family. You can literally sell these products on autopilot, get yourself a good website, choose the right niche and the right product, and you'll churn these out. And if you can sell, I recommend selling high ticket products. Okay. So all the products that I sell are priced above a thousand dollars. 
Some oh, of the okay. projects are seven, ten thousand dollars, and so a lot. If you're getting a thirty percent commission on a thousand dollars a month, or well, the, pro year, the products that I'm really selling good. actually offer a fifty-four percent commission. Whoa! So it's a it's a tasty, tasty affiliate program. The main offer that I actually sell it, it's a high-ticket health offer. And right <laughs> now, the health space, well. For obvious reasons, it's absolutely thriving. Blowing up. So more people than ever, I'm finding, are purchasing these products. So since the beginning of the global pandemic, we've personally seen a, a big, big influx in new customers purchasing these high-ticket items. But, you know, there's lots of different niches. If you don't want to go into the health niche, you can choose another one, the software niche. But Flip finding funnels. the right niche for you is, is really, really important. So the yeah. affiliate market and sector is really, like I say, that's where my bread and butter is. Um, I, also, I also dabble with cryptocurrency. I've had a few big windfalls from that over the, the last 18 months. It's been a very, very turbulent time in the crypto world over the last Yo, for few sure. months. But if you Take know the right points to get into, you can do very, very well. But I, what I would say, you know, don't take people's advice. Don't take my advice on this. If I say, go out and buy some Ethereum or go out and buy X, Y, and Z, you know, don't take my advice on this. You're not a financial advisor. Own, I'm not a, I'm not a that, financial right. advisor, but do your own reading, guys. Yeah. If you want to learn about cryptocurrency, Start looking for books. Start looking for authority figures in the space. And don't listen to your mate or some random bloke who's just talking to you on YouTube. Cross-reference all the information that you've got and work out whether or not it all fits together. That's what I did. I, I took advice off three or four different people who I personally know, whose advice I value. And three of them, they were all saying the same coins, get this one, get this one, and get this one. And bang, I went and invested a few grand, a few thousand dollars. And yeah, that served me very, very well this year. Um, so I've done that. Mention, and there's I'm a also lot of, lot of free resources on Binance. You can find tons of things right here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't necessarily have to hire a mentor, but it's better to work with somebody who's already has a lot of experience. Definitely. But you can get started on Coinbase for free um, or Binance. It's a little bit more difficult to get signed up there. As a U.S. citizen, I have trouble getting listed, approved for Binance. Okay. But I actually got a, a client right here in Chiang Mai um, helping her grow her YouTube channel. She paid me in Bitcoin. And then I turned around and just put it back into fiat currency because I needed the money. Ah. But it's been going up lately. It's what, like 45000 now? Sure, I thought it hit 45 the other day, and you know, it was up to 62. I reckon it'll go to 100 before the end of the year, but that's just my prediction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. Fingers crossed. To so, the yeah, the, the affiliate marketing and the crypto are really my, my two main passive income sources right now. Excellent. And, uh, do you also have a Facebook group, right? The, what's Thailand Digital Nomads and Expats? Thailand Expats and Digital Nomads, mate. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. So that's a fairly well, new group that I put together, actually. I only put that group together, I don't know, maybe three months ago. And it kind of sort of lay dormant for a while. And I knew mm -hmm. that it was something that I wanted to do with that group. And since my YouTube channel really started taking off, loads of people have started joining this group and Excellent. it's a really good community it's basically helping people who want to move to thailand and you know moving to thailand if you don't know about it if you haven't been here before it can be it can be a little bit overwhelming there's a lot to think about how do i get a job how do i make money what visa do i need you know how am i going to find a house do i rent a car but all yeah, of yeah. these things to think about it's overwhelming so mm -hmm. a lot of these people coming into the group Obviously, I'm offering them my, my free advice, you know, and sharing my experience. And it really got me thinking, actually, about the people in there. A lot of them want this information. So it's, it's led me to set up my, my a third business that I'm actually building right now, which is a consultancy business. Mm -hmm. So it's, I've created the website, and I'm actually being uh, going to call myself a relocation consultant. Uh, so if people are interested in moving to Thailand, I'm going to be offering one-on-one -on -one consultancy calls, and I'm also going to give you an ebook. Now, inside the ebook, they're going to be my personal recommendations 
for people like language schools, recommend okay. lawyers who I've used personally if you want any legal matters taken care of, local schools that I also wow. know if you've got kids. So it's basically going to be idea. all my recommendations in global in all of Thailand. Okay, so not just in Phuket. I've got various different people sourcing out good quality links for me. And if you're moving to Thailand and you will basically want to fast track the move, you don't want to be working with unreliable people, hoping that you get your money's worth, et cetera. If you want to pay the true prices and fast track your move to Thailand, that's the business that I'm going to be building over the next two or three months. So something awesome. in the pipeline there, Mike. Yeah, I know. I'd like to talk to you more, maybe offline, about partnering in some way because I'm connected with a guy here in Chiang Mai. Have you are you familiar with Shelter, Shelter Global? I'm not. No, there's What's another that? one called Gitlinks. But essentially, what they allow you to do is set up an employer on record. I think you pay them about okay. five hundred dollars a month, and then you get your paycheck through them. Um, it's a little sure. bit more complicated than that. But I might be partnering with him and then referring new business his way. Sounds interesting, mate. Yeah, so that could be a potential partnership. But uh, yeah, we could talk more about that later. But yeah, that's that's great. Um, and next question I want to ask is, how are you enjoying the island lifestyle in Costa Mui? Oh, Just arrived there a week ago. It's dreadful, mate. Absolutely, <laughs> dr you wouldn't believe it. Such a struggle over here. You know? <laughs> no, sorry, my, my, my English sarcasm gets lost on some people. I guess it's it's fantastic. I mean. Yeah. Obviously, Beautiful island in Phuket, <coughs> a little bit me. smaller than Phuket, but you've you got to drink in my water. Yeah, it's a smaller. I was after about five <laughs> months, I started getting a little bit bored because I've seen it's a mm. relatively small. I mean, I think it's like one percent the size of Hawaii. Well, I mean, obviously, but, having lived in Phuket before, I'm used to the island lifestyle, but what uh -huh. I would say is this place is very very different to phuket i mean there's just a few comparisons that i made from being here for one week there's a lot less traffic here there's yes. phuket you've got your four lane highways big intersections with traffic lights you know minivans flying over the place like even now even now in the sandbox it's still fairly hectic really? on the roads. that's one of the things you know, i don't like it's about still phuket. fairly hectic mm -hmm. here in samui Small little, you know, two lane roads, very few traffic lights. Yep, yep. Driving here is more country style. People think nothing of just, you know, cutting into the turns like that. It's it's a lot less it's a lot less built up. So in Phuket, you've got a lot of high rise condominiums, a lot of investment projects that I was selling when working in real estate. All of those off plan properties here. They a don't lot of, exist, you a know. A lot of wealthy retired, a lot of wealthy retired expats go to Phuket, right? And it's, sure, it's sure. beautiful places in Koh Samui. I, I, you know that already. There's, a, I mean, I would say there's more. There's more beach bungalows. So in mm -hmm. Phuket, you don't get stuff on the beach. Most mm -hmm. of the stuff is set across from the beach. All right, Bang Tao and Surin, you've got a few things, but majority of the beaches are fairly fairly clean of restaurants there's nothing on them here everything's on the beach you know yep. the resorts houses so you can literally step out into the sand so that that's one of the main differences that i noticed and as well the level of westerners here there's mm -hmm. especially in bangrock in bangrock that's a popular area for expats i would say there's far fewer westerners than in phuket you know, mm -hmm. I can drive around. I mean, yeah. on the ferry, on the boat getting here, there was three other Western dudes. Uh, <laughs> That's it. Mostly just yeah. black people. In Phuket, there's, you know, you see a lot of uh, a lot of Westerners. Here in, here mm -hmm. in Samui, far fewer than Phuket, I would say. So I've I only like been that. here a week, but so far, so good. Yep. Not to mention you've got Koh Phangan and Koh Tao with world-class diving just about an hour and a half away by boat. So sure. I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm alive. I'm pretty yeah, sure he'll be just back. fine. He'll be just fine. <laughs> Have we got any questions in the comments, Mike, that you can see? Oh, let me check. If, if you're let watching me... on the stream, guys, let us know yeah. if you've got any questions for me. I'm always yeah. happy to help. Yeah, let me see here. How do I check the private chat? And here's the chat. Ah, nothing yet. Oh, I should have done this where I put the chat overlay on top. 
Let's see if that works. So we should be able to see them now over here on the right. Okay. All no good. questions yet, but let's keep going uh, for another. We're going to wrap this up in about 10 minutes. But I have a few more questions for Mike here. And uh, so my next question is, uh, you recently started a YouTube channel. What, how long ago? About five, six months ago? Not yeah, about, about six months ago. Just uh -huh. under six months ago, I launched the channel. That's right, mate. And lately, I've been noticing it's, it's taking off because you put a lot of videos up there about Phuket Sandbox, and they did pretty well. So my question is, what advice do you have for our audience listening now uh, looking to start and grow a YouTube channel? Sure. Based on uh, your experience. So, I mean, if you're, if you're watching this and you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, my biggest bit of advice would be don't wait. You know, I... Now. I waited for a long time because I was under this illusion that yeah. you had to be a superstar on camera and you had to be like, hey, my name's Mike. And, you know, you had to be this uh -huh. sort of this bubbly, amazing personality to thrive on YouTube. Well, in fact, uh -huh. it couldn't be further from the truth. You know, if you're providing information and relevant value that people want to watch, then that's all you need to do. You know, and if you're thinking about building a channel, my my biggest bit of advice, apart from, you know, just get started, would be get some instruction, guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah get yeah. some mentorship. Good point. Get, get some training. Invest in a course or even better, invest in a coaching program that will actually help you do this, you know, which is exactly what I did. I invested in a coaching program. So... It was basically a six-week course with a on, an online marketing expert who has made multiple six figures using purely YouTube, okay? Wow. So I discovered him on YouTube. I went through, I actually purchased one of his programs, a separate one of his programs, got to know him a little bit better, and then purchased his YouTube program because it, it was that good. What's and his name? You want his to name give him a shout out? Yeah, his name's Richard Matharu. If you're watching Richard on YouTube, uh, I would highly recommend his his stuff. It's absolutely incredible if, if you've already got a business, okay? Mm -hmm. He specializes in the marketing side of things. But what I would say is, you know, don't just be throwing videos out there randomly. Yeah, don't just be putting videos of your cat doing backflips <laughs> because it's not valuable. You might get a few thousand views on it, but you're not going to build that subscriber base. You know, you've got to be putting out content that is relevant to what your viewers want. Uh -huh. So I've all, I started off putting expat stuff on the channel, a few little business videos. And what I was finding was the majority of my views were coming from the, the Thailand based stuff. And you know, I was putting some business stuff out there. It was getting a few hundred views, but the Thailand specific stuff, that niche, Bang. They were really fly in those videos. So I really decided to niche down and, you know, do the expat in Thailand stuff. And since then, the views have been flying. I've had 11,000 views on my sandbox wow. video. I put a video out the other day that's had nine, almost a thousand views already. Um, Excellent. So and choosing you're... the right niche is really, really important. And, you know, let's say, let's say you've got a fitness business. OK, if you decide to put out, you know, fitness business videos, realistically, like let's say how to get fit in six, how to get fit in 60 days. The reality of you ranking for that That's video very is very, very small because very there's so many big YouTubers out there who are getting millions and millions of views. So really think about which sector of your niche do you want to go for? So what I might do is how to get fit in 60 days while living as an expat in Thailand. Yeah, or, something along those lines that would work better. You know, the top fitness tips for, let's say, mothers who've just gone through pregnancy. Mm -hmm. See, you see, you've got to really got the niche down so you can, you can start to get your content to the right sort of people. There's so many people doing this, but if you choose the right niche with the right product and the right, the right message, 
that's when you'll see your channel start uh -huh. to fly, guys. So that would be my two pieces of advice. Get some expert instruction. And if, if you'd like more info on that expert instruction, feel free to send me a message. And also focus on the niche, yeah? Focus on your niche. And usually the best niche to choose are people who are just like you, yeah? yeah. I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't be promoting products to pregnant mothers because, well, they wouldn't be able to resonate with me. You know, I'm a guy in his 30s living in Koh Samui. So <laughs> my particular niche is people who can resonate with my story. People like Mike, you know, who yeah, that's one of the reasons in Thailand. Wanted, so. That's one of the reasons I want to interview you. Our, our name is both Mike. You're doing something very similar and uh, we're in a similar market. Uh, just that's it. enjoying life in Thailand. So that's it. great. I, I really like talking to you. And Thanks, you. Thanks for having me, mate. I appreciate yeah, you absolutely. having me on today. For sure. And I'm going to be in Co Chiang Mai probably, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. I need to wait to get the vaccine probably. Um, but we were talking about before the interview that you don't necessarily need the vaccine. You just take a PCR test. And, of course, this is subject to change over the next month or two. Um, but it's looking like it's if – be, if you've been in Thailand the entire time, you can go to Koh Samui with a PCR test. That's well, my understanding. Yeah. I mean, I was able to get here from the Phuket sandbox with no problems. So if you come into the Phuket sandbox, you'll get your after your 14 days in Phuket, you'll get what's called your sandbox release form, which <laughs> allows you to travel through Thailand. So there's there's no wow. issue there. Now, try, if you've been in Thailand for a while, you will need a RT-PCR test that's taken within 72 hours of your journey. Now, that is, it's a fluid situation. It also depends whether or not you're passing through dark red zones, which are issues here in Thailand. So mm -hmm. what I would say to anybody watching this is check an official source. Go and look on the Thai government website. Check out the local restrictions within Thailand and do not travel until you've checked out those official details, guys. That's really, really important. I yeah, highly recommend checking those out. Uh, I'll put some links in the comments as well where you can learn more about these things. I, I actually, you know, I've been in Chiang Mai for about a month now, and I got two separate appointments to get the vaccine. One through the Thailand Board of Investment, because I got approved for my smart visa and I applied through there. Um, and then another one, because I registered at a hospital in Bang when I was in Bangkok. And I just decided to skip it because... The situation there is looking pretty bleak. There's a lot of protests. They're still under a total lockdown, as far as I can understand. So here in Chiang Mai, things are pretty much open. And I'm just going to wait to get it here, hopefully soon. Fair and play, mate. I can travel for you. wherever you I want to go. It's for you. Yep, yep. And last question, and that is, uh, where can we find more information about you online? Social media, your website? Sure. Just List off those. So my website's here in the link, MikeDavisonMarketing.com. Or if you'd like to follow me on YouTube, which is where I put a lot of my content, you can find me at YouTube.com forward slash Mike Davison online. Excellent. And then you also have your, your master class through there too. They can join your groups. You have two separate groups, right? I do, I yeah. Like I've got two there. separate groups. And again, you'll find out all the information of them on my website. You can find the links to both of them on my website, mate. Perfect. Well, it's almost 45 minutes now, so we're awesome. right on time. Well, Thanks thank so you much. for your time today. If you've been watching this, thank you. I'm looking forward to hearing from you all. If you've got any questions about me or what I do, please feel free to reach out. You can find me on Facebook as well. Mike Davison is my name and I'm always, I'm always, my unbox, inbox is always open. It might take me a couple of days to get back to you, but if you have got any questions, please feel free to reach out guys. Awesome. Thanks so much. We'll be All in right. touch. Talk to you soon. Thanks for your time, mate. See you again. Okay.